Greetings from Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we're here today to talk about the French language and uh, we're going to start out first with the special characteristics of the French language which I have listed here on the board and it's also at the introduction of your chapter on French. First of all, you're going to learn the number one thing if you haven't already studied this is that several letters in French are going to equal one sound and that's the clue to learning this language is to learn what letter groups equal what sounds. And examples or examples they give in the book are B E A U. You've got four letters that equal one sound, bo. Then in T R A V A I L L E R, the I L L E R equals one sound, ye. So you've got travaille. So as you study your chart and see the different letter combinations, that's how you learn the symbols for those sounds. Then, the second uh, main thing about the French language, many letters are silent, and you'll have to learn which ones are silent and when they're silent. And then uh, something your book does not have that I've used with students through the years to help them in learning what is pronounced at the ends of French words is the word careful, C-A-R-E-F-U-L plus Q. You take the consonants, C, R, F, L, Q, and those are the ones that are usually pronounced at the ends of words. Of course, always we have rules and then we have exceptions, which you've probably already found out. <clears throat> now, the other thing, of course, English is probably your native language there and not a land like it is here in the States. So you will understand this. Sounds that do not exist in English we have the mixed vowels, first of all, as in U, E, and U. Those are produced with the lips doing one thing and the tongue doing another thing simultaneously. Then we have the nasal vowels in French. There are four of those. The A, AN, ON, and the UN. And you have to learn the spellings for those and when those occur. And then the ENYA which if you studied Italian, it also exists there. It has to do with the G-N spelling. Uh, the closest we can come to that sound in English is the word onion. Onion, yeah. Okay, then the fourth major characteristic of the French language, the stress patterns are going to be different from many languages. Usually the last syllable is the syllable that is stressed. It's called the tonic syllable. Uh, except in words that end in the mute E, which is the schwa, the E, uh, the neutral sound. Okay, then in French, also a major characteristic is that it's a very legato language, very connected uh, rhythm for this language. A word that I learned years ago, mellifluous, means flowing like honey, and that's how I think of the French language as flowing like honey. This comes from the Latin mel meaning honey and fluus meaning fluid or flowing. So it's a very, I call it a, a vowel city <laughs> in the French language because it is so full of long connected vowels rather than so much emphasis on the consonants as we find in English and in German. Okay. The other main thing we're going to do today is to work on the IPA for uh, a French melody by Gabriel Fauré that your uh, teacher was supposed to give you copies of this for you to work on it and figure out what the IPA is. And today we're going to go through, talk about the rules, why each uh, symbol is what it is for each word. and uh, explain that. Okay, water. Okay, so I gave you the score, or I set the score for you, which also has the translation, which is very important to know because you need to know when you're dealing with verbs or not with verb endings which can be tricky at times if you do not know the language itself. 
Uh, <clears throat> I also think it's important that you IPA on the score itself of the music because you're dealing with elision and liaison and you have to have the music in front of you to know when that is happening. In the actual spoken language, the mute E is usually not pronounced, but when there is a note written for uh, uh, a syllable in the music, then you're going to have to pronounce it. Uh, the title itself, if you IPA that, uh, you're going to have a liaison. Okay, liaison is the, I'm pronouncing it in French for you, uh, we hear the word lia liaison or something, people pronounce it that way. Uh, it's like something that goes between, you know, and here the S, as you'll find out, becomes voiced and becomes the Z sound, that's the voiced sound for an S. And you get a présent rêve. Uh, you would not pronounce in the spoken language, you would, would not pronounce the V. So you would not announce the title as a présent rêve, you would just say a présent rêve. But uh, if you're singing those words and there is a note for the schwa, you would sing uh, that. <clears throat> now, so starting with the first word, we have the beginning of the song, and right now we're going to cut, we're going to stop the tape and then restart it in a moment. Hello, we're back now with uh, doing the actual IPA of A Présent Rêve. Let's start with the very first word. The D-A-N-S is pronounced don. The D sound becomes the symbol, D. The AN, the nasal vowel, is there because the spelling is A-N. The S, at the end of the word, uh, with your score, uh, is usually silent. But in this case, because the next word is related to it, and uh, it begins with a vowel, the S becomes voiced and becomes a Z sound. So we have dan zan. The next word, the U-N, is another spelling of a, the other nasal vowel, un. So now we have dan, zan. Then the beginning of the next word is the unvoiced S, s sound. Okay. And uh, this is not nasal, even though it's spelled S-O-M-M-E-I-L, because it's the double consonant. So it divides between the two M's. Even though you don't write them in the IPA, it becomes saw, which the open O is the usual spelling of uh, the usual IPA letter for the O sound, the O letter, saw. And then we get M-E-I-L. And the E-I-L, that as we talked about before, certain letter combinations equal one sound. Here we get sort of a combination of the A and the Y. There's the glide. It sounds like a little buzzing. So, so far we have don, zon, sa, me. Okay, I overdid that a little bit. Then the next letter, the Q U E, the spelling of the Q U equals just the k sound. And then the E that follows is just the schwa, the ending of that word. So we get k. And then in the next word, the C H in French will equal the sh sound, like you're saying sh. And so for that, we get sh. And the a ah is your usual a, ah, the bright a. Ah. Later on, we'll get to some words that have the a, ah, the darker a. Ah. It depends on if it's followed by an s or a z sound or a silent s. So then we have char. In this case, the r is pronounced. And in singing French classical pieces, you use your tongue to produce the r sound. You flip and trill the tongue. Whereas in the actual spoken French language, it is uvularized like ugh, ugh. hard to do that. So, char me becomes me. The M is an M. The AIT is a verb ending. And it becomes, uh, the T becomes silent. Uh, and the uh, AI spelling equals the E, as you'll see when you study your chart. So, we have char me. And then the next T is the first letter of a word, so it is pronounced, and it's spelled O-N. There is another nasal vowel, ton, 
But then we have another liaison because the next word starts with a vowel and it is related to the ton. So it means your image in French if you look at the uh, translation. So we have que charme ton ni. The N connects over to the I. That's why I've written them so close together. Ton image. Now. Where do we get the je sound from? Well, it's because the G before the E is going to equal that j, that French j sound. Just as in the next word, where which means I, and the J equals the j sound. So again, we have the schwa following the j sound. So, so far we have dans un sommeil que charme ton image. Je, and then the next word, rêve. The first one is the open E because it's followed by a consonant and another vowel. And the AIS is another verb ending, which you wouldn't know unless you know French, but you can look at the translation and see that it is a verb. The S is silent, and the AI spelling again equals the E. So we have je rêve, then we have the singular uh, article, the, le, which is always the schwa. Te, le, me, de. All of those are going to be the schwa. The single articles, definite and indefinite. Okay, and the next word, as you turn the page, that's one word. B-O-N-H-E-U-R. Now, we've spoken before about the letters that are silent in French, and H is one of those. It is silent here. So, you would think it would be a nasal vowel because of the spelling, but this is an exception to the rule. So it's going to be open, ball, and then the N, because the H is silent, goes over to the N, and then the vowel, bonheur, and then you flip that R at the end. Now, why is it this one, the E, uh, rather than the U, uh, that's one of those mixed vowels where the tongue does one thing and the lips do another. And that, it's in the interior of the word is the rule on that. So that is why, if you see... The EU spelling with a consonant that's usually sounded following it, it is going to be the open er uh, sound. Okay, a little water. Next line. Okay, top of the second page, we have ardent. You can see the word ardent in that, yeah. And it's the bright A ah because there is no S following it. It's the usual and the R is pronounced D-E-N-T. The T is silent and the E-N is the nasal vowel. So that's why we get the nasal vowel there. Ardent. And then the next word, me, the I is A, E, A, the bright A. And then we've had this one before, the je, mirage. Then the next word, T-E-S, is the plural pronoun your eyes is the next word. So here again, we're going to have that liaison that we talked about. And usually the S is silent in that word. But here again, it becomes voiced and becomes the Z sound. And the Y becomes a glide. So you get tes yeux. And this is closed because that EU is followed by an X, which is silent in this case. Usually in this case, but we're going to have two liaisons. So then the X becomes the Z sound as well. Tes yeux étaient. So we get uh, the, uh, the E, T-A-I-N-T is another verb, tense. And if you notice that E at the beginning of the word has a little accent mark that goes this way. This is called the acute accent, the accent aigu. And so whenever you see that accent going that way, it's going to be the closed E sound. And then A-I-E-N-T, would you believe all of that equals this one sound, E. So you get tes yeux étaient. And then in the next word, you get your fun French U sound. The P and the L, just like they are. And then U, the S is silent, plus. This is another mixed vowel where the tongue is saying E and the lips are saying U simultaneously. So, tes yeux étaient 
plus du. Now, here's another letter spelling. D-O-U-X. The X is silent. The O-U spelling equals the, l the sound U. If you learned that, you've got it made there. So, plus du and then ta, the T. And notice that it's very, um, what's the word, dental? The tip of the tongue only touches the back of the front teeth, front top teeth. So it's very soft, uh, probably like in languages that you're familiar with. It's not t like that, but, but it's t soft. Uh, ta voix, yes. The V becomes, stays the V. And the O-I spelling, those two letters together equal wa, W-A, glide plus the I. And the X in this case is silent because there's no word that follows it that begins with a vowel that would have a liaison. But now in the next one, we're going to have our first example of a, an elision or elision. This one, the ET, uh, let's see, what, there it is, okay. Right here, you have the word, looks like pure, that's what it means. If we pronounce it pure, if it had two notes, it would be pure, but there's only one note. So it's on a, the E is going to drop out at the end of the word P-U-E-R, and the R is going to connect over to the next word, which is E-T. The T is silent, and the word in French means and. It's the conjunction and, which is pronounced with the closed E sound. So you get uh, ta voix pure sonore, okay? The next one is easy. The first one is, uh, the S is the S. This one is open. The N divides here, so it's not a nasal vowel. And both of those are going to be open, sonore, okay, with a schwa at the end. And then we come to the next one, which is the French U again, du, and then R E, I mean, sorry, R A Y O N N A I S. That's another verb form. The A uh, Y is going to equal the A. And the O is going to open. Even though there's an O N spelling, notice there's another N. So it's a double consonant. So it will not be nasal. It will not be a nasal vowel. So you get tu rayonne. And that one is open. All of that A-I-S is going to equal E. Now, the next one is a fun line because we're going to have, first we're going to have an elision, elision, and then we're going to have a liaison following that. Okay, here we go with the C becomes the K sound, K symbol, opens up, two M's, but again, double consonant, so no nasal vowel there, but the E drops out again whenever you have an elision, something is omitted, elided. So the E drops out. The M connects over to that next word, which is a nasal vowel, for sure. So you have comme. Okay, and why do we have the elision? Because there's no note for the schwa, the E, the mute E, at the end of C-O-M-M-E. So, comme ciel. Now, in this one, the C-I becomes the C sound, opens up to the E, okay, Cieli. again, those words are related, the clear, clarified or whatever, sky, we have to look at the translation on that, Ciel meaning sky or heaven, and the L connects over to the acute accented E, so Ciel et Cle, and we have an open AI spelling, and then again we have another acute E, Éclairé par, P-A-R, the bright A, par l'aurore, okay? Actually, the L apostrophe, the apostrophe stands for an E that's been left out because it's also a vowel, so they have contracted it there and connected it, yeah. So the open, this is open as it was here, which I failed to mention, I think, is because of the uh, o followed uh, before an R followed by a vowel. Mm -hmm. Those are usually open. Okay, a little more water. <clears throat> the next line. Okay, we've had this one before. This is the French U. 
tu, and then the bright ma. We don't need to write both p's. In German, well, in Italian, we have the double consonants, but not in French, okay? Tu, ma. Now, here we've got a peu, a schwa, because it is before uh, a single consonant followed by a vowel. Yes, this right here. Okay, so it's going to be the schwa here rather than pe. Tu m'appelais, and the A-I-S again, is um, a verb ending, and the S is silent. Now, you would think, oh, maybe this should be a liaison here, but no. Because the next word is the word and, and the mapele is not related to it. Uh, so we're not going to do a liaison there. We're going to say just tu m'appelais, and then we're going to go e je quitte. There's your uh, Q U spelling again, and the U is silent, so the Q U becomes a K sound. I is I, te, another verb ending. La, right, ah. The next one will be open, ter, because it is before double consonant, the E before the two R's, which we only write one of when we IPA. So, I je quitte la terre, and then we've got P O U R, the O U spelling, pour. Then we've got M apostrophe E N, the E has been left out again because of, of the apostrophe there. No note for it, so they do a, a contraction, and we get mon. Okay, now we haven't had this next one. This F-U-I-R spelling, the U-I spelling, is going to equal a glide off of the French U sound. So what we're going to get here is fuir. So my lips, I get my face in place as I call it, I pucker. Fu, there's the U, the French sound, with the tongue on E and the lips on U at the same time. If the tongue is not on E, it's going to sound like an U. So you have to go fuir, and then you flip the R, but there's another word after it. So now we've got a natural, in this case, a natural liaison, where the R, which is usually pronounced, connects over into the A of avec. And again, careful plus Q. This one ends in a C, so it becomes the K sound, and it is pronounced in this case. Pour mon fuir, and let me do that a little better. Pour mon fuir, I'll do it slowly. Pour mon fuir, a little faster, it glides together. Avec, turn the page. We have T-O-I spelling, the O-I becomes the wa, toi, and the V-E-R, the S is silent. Ver. Okay, and then la, we've had these before. Then the next word, li, there's that French e again. See how the syllables are divided. In the next part of the word, the next syllable, M-I-E, with the accent going this way, this is called the grave or the grave accent. So that's going to equal the e sound, the open e sound, okay, as opposed to the e of the closed sound of the acute accent. So, lumière, okay, then the uh, IE, of course, glides, I failed to mention that, that's why we get the M sound, la mière, okay, next line, plural, anything plural, les, me, te, de, is the closed E sound, the S is silent, so les, cieux, okay, CI, as we've had before, becomes, before the I becomes that s sound, the unvoiced S, and the I glides here, and now we have the E-U spelling again with the X, which is silent, so we're going to get the U, the closed one. Les cieux, and here's the word you've had before, pour, pour, and the P's in French are also soft, they're not pour like that, but they're pour, pour, just a tiny little puff of air, very soft. Okay. Les yeux pour nous, the same vowel after that. You just have N-O-U, O-U, O-U spelling equals U. The S is silent. Now, here's another case where you think, oh, maybe we should do um, a liaison here. But, again, if you notice, after nous, there is a comma. There is a comma after nous. So, no connection will we make there at all. That will be separated. No liaison. 
So we get, we end here, and then we start the next phrase. E-N is your nasal vowel spelling. En, T-R-O-U. They've, again, contracted two words. It would be entre, entre ouvre, but they've taken out the E again. So you only have one note, so that's why they did that. Uh, en, tru, vre. V, R, you do so tho say those. And then A, I, E, N, T, again, that verb ending becomes E, all those letters. Okay, then this is the same as we've had before. The E, U, R spelling opens it up. You have a sounded consonant. It's in, in, in the interior of the word. The S is silent, nothing after it to create a uh, liaison. So, leur. Now, look at this next one. The U and nu, nu, again, is your French U sound. And then we have a note for the schwa, so we do have to sing that as well. But the S is silent again. Nu, it's not part of careful plus Q, remember that. Now, the next one, we have a combination of the splan, nasal vowel spelling, E-N. Okay, E-U-R-S. Okay, so we have... The open one again, just like we did over here in this. Splendor. And it ends with an S, but then the next word also relates to this one. Splendor. Okay. Splendor. Of course, it means splendor. You can just look at it and tell. Okay. Splendor. The S becomes voiced. I-N. Nasal vowel. I. Call. This one is open. It's not con. It's call because guess what? Two ends. The next one's on the other line. So call nu. And this is pronounced the same as the other word. It's the ending of that word. But you have your French u followed by the e. And when you're singing the schwas, you don't want to stress them because in the spoken language, they don't exist. They only exist again because the uh, music it has a note there for that syllable, for that syllable. Okay, then we've had something similar here. We've got the French U, lueur, that open E-U-R, and S again, the S is silent. Then we have, this one's pretty easy, divine. And guess what? We have another liaison here because the entre vieux, the next word, goes with divinas. So you would, the S becomes voiced in this case. It's not silent. Divinazon. There it is. Zon. That is a nasal vowel again. E-N is the spelling. Tr. Okay, this is your interior one again, followed by, uh, yes, the entre consonant plus the vowel. Entre vieux. These rules are all in your book. Okay, and again, the um, S is silent at the end of the schwa there. The mute E, same thing. Entre vieux, there's your French E again. Looks like a Y. Okay, then the next word, okay. Now we're getting to the use of the letter, the darker A sound in this. And we're going to pronounce the S, which is usually not pronounced. So, first of all, the H is silent. And look at that E. It has the acute accent, the accent aigu over it. So it's going to be E. And then because the, it's the A here, letter A is followed by the S, it's going to be the darker. Elas. And the S is pronounced. It's an exception to the rule. And another, elas, same word. Then we have triste. Okay. That one's pretty easy. Okay. The S is pronounced here because it's in the middle of the word. And there's no reason for it to be anything else but an S, uh, unvoiced sound. Triste. And next we have an acute E again. Reveil. Guess what? We've got that E-I-L again, which equals A. That little E A plus the buzzy Y sound after it. Reveil. And here's the plural. D-E-S. S is silent. D. Next word. No double N, just a single N. So we get the nasal vowel. Songe. And there's that G before the E again at the end, and it gets the schwa sound. Then in the next phrase, let's see here. A little water. Mm. 
Da, 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 Sanja, yes. Um, mm -hmm, making sure I didn't skip anything. Ah, I think I did. I think I skipped a little bit here. Okay. I actually skipped something. At the top of the page, you're going to get the je, le, te, me, same thing. Je, ta, bright one. Whoops. Pelle, whoops, pelle, whoops. And actually, that's how it would be if you breathed after that. Je t'appelle. Actually, we're not going to do the schwa. I prefer that when a student sings this, they breathe after that because there's a comma there. Je t'appelle. I call to you. Okay. Uh, oh, night is the next part of the translation there. So, je t'appelle, breathe, and then, oh, there's that glide again. Nui, spelled U-I, the T is silent. Nui, then we get the nasal vowel, ra, ra, and the uh, D-S is all silent. So, you get... You've got that O-I spelling, ramwa, and then the plural, T. That's like the others we've had. And then we have mensonge, T mensonge, nasal vowel uh, spelled E-N, S-O-N, nasal vowel, and then that usual je, the S is silent. Now. Back to the where <laughs> I left that line out. Then we have revient. Okay, in this case, this is a little different spelling for your um, nasal vowel. The, um, it's I-E-N-S, but the I actually is the glide. So we don't want to leave that out. So we have the schwa for the beginning of the, it means return, return. Revient. And so that I glides into the, the nasal vowel. Then it repeats again. Reviens. And then we have radi, that bright I. There's no S after it. Then we have this EU spelling. Okay. And then in the next syllable, there's nothing after it in this case. It's all by itself in the one syllable. So it's going to be the closed. U. Radio. And then that S there becomes a Z sound. It's a voiced sound. Why? Because it's intervocalic. You're going to run into that a lot. That means it's between two vowels. Uh huh. So you've got the S here between the U and the, the schwa E. So radieuse is what you're going to get. And then again, revient. And this O, o with the circumflex, the little rooftop, we call it, on top of it closes it to the dark O, okay, rather than O, it's O, and here's that word again, Nui, and then, uh, let's see, <laughs> Ramwa. oh, that's the other line, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting lost on the board here, uh, O Nui, and then the last word, Mysterious, which is pretty much the same, the M-Y becomes Substitute an I sound for the Y, and you get E. Accent, accent aigu, the acute accent on the E. Mysterieux, there's that EU again by itself, that EU spelling, and then voiced Z because it's between two vowels, intervocalic. Okay, so let me uh, <clears throat> pronounce the whole thing for you again. I'm going to sit, and hopefully you have your paper in front of you. <clears throat> I'm going to speak it in rhythm with the words, which I think might help you the most. Okay, and we're going to do it rather slowly. <clears throat> so here we're going to do it like in... One and two and three and like that. 
Here we go. One, two, three. Dans un sommeil que charmait ton image, je rêvais le bonheur ardent mirage. Tes yeux étaient plus doux, ta voix pure et sonore. Tu rayonnais comme un ciel éclairé par l'aurore. One, two. Tu m'appelais et je quittais la terre pour m'enfuir avec toi vers la lumière. Les cieux pour nous entrouvrent leur nuit. Splendeuse inconnue, lueur divine entrevue, hélas, hélas, triste rêve des songes. Je t'appelle. Oh, nuit, rends-moi tes mensonges. Reviens, reviens, radieuse. Reviens, oh, nuit mystérieuse. Now, I'm not sure if I made a mistake over on the uh, second, well, yeah, second, well, actually third page here. Uh, on les cieux pour nous, uh, I think years ago I learned it as les cieux pour nous en, and did a liaison there. But uh, in teaching, eventually I learned that you should not do a liaison there. You might hear some people doing it, but mistakenly so. Uh, the, uh, mm, I would say the supreme authority on liaison uh, would be Pierre Bernac. And there's a book he's written called Interpretation of French Song. A little book you can probably get it in paperback inexpensively. And it also has translations, but it also shows you where uh, he would recommend that you do the liaison or not do the liaison. Uh, or maybe Elysion as well, but mostly uh, Liaison. And in the beginning of the book, he also has a whole section on discussing the ones that you should liaison and others that are forbidden. And of course, in the French language, different authorities don't always agree <laughs> on which you know liaison should be done and which shouldn't. So you'll find discrepancy in that. Some will say this and some will say that. So good luck with your French. I hope this has helped. Uh, if you have any questions, ask your teacher and she will communicate those to me. And uh, best of luck. Thank you and bye-bye from Texas.